Hello, my name is Dave Cruz. I'm an associate pastor at the Desert Gateway Baptist Church, where Dr. Ron Leversey is my pastor. My primary function is to direct the music of our church, but I also teach the Berean Bible class, and I've taught both in our Modest College and our Christian Day School for Children. I've been asked to present a few many lectures regarding studying the Bible, not just encouraging you to do it, but showing you a few practical ways uh, to study the Word of God. Now, since this is the first time I've done something like this, you'll probably notice several edits on these videos, most likely because I messed up reading my script. Secondly, after seeing a couple of videos of myself, I can assure you that I am much more impressive in person than I am on a video. <laughs> I'm only kidding. Today I'd like to give you some preliminary remarks regarding Bible study. We read over in John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32, where Jesus says to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15, we read, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now there's certain disciplines that we're told to do as Christians. Uh, we're told to read our Bibles, we're told to pray, we're told to witness, uh, to go to church, tithe, th things like that. Uh, but when I think about these disciplines, prayer and Bible study really go hand in hand. Apart from prayer, you really cannot effectively study and understand the Word of God. And yet without studying the Bible, you will not know how to properly pray. You know, when you uh, know the scriptures, you're going to know the will of God for your life. And when you know the will of God for your life, you'll be able to pray specifically according to God's will and receive specific answers. We read over in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 14, And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, Paul says this, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are, are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Now here the Apostle Paul gives two reasons why we should know the word of God. Number one, to come to know Christ as our Savior and Lord, and number two, to help us to grow spiritually. Now the means of this growth, according to this text, is through doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness. For example, doctrine shows us the path in which we are to walk. This is the way walk ye in it, the Bible says. Uh, reproof, on the other hand, shows us where we got off the path. Correction shows us how to get back on the right path. And then instruction in righteousness shows us how to stay on the right path. Now, according to Matthew chapter 22 and verse 29, Jesus said that false doctrine and error arises from not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. With cults and false religions abounding all around us, it's absolutely essential for the child of God to be grounded in the scriptures so he can discern truth from error. Now, why is that most Christians don't study the Bible? Well, first of all, because they don't know how. They hear that they should, but they're not trained to do so. Just like any other discipline, it's not just important to encourage people to do uh, these disciplines, like reading the Bible or witnessing or whatever, but they need, they need also to be shown how to do those things. And a lot of people don't know how to study the Bible, and so they don't do it. Now, if we were to meet a starving man by the side of a river, we could do one of two things. Either we could get a fishing rod ourselves and catch him a fish and satisfy his hunger for that day, or we could teach him how to fish and thereby satisfy his hunger for the rest of his life. So most Christians don't study the Word of God because they don't know how, but secondly, because they're not motivated to do so. Uh, this is due to not ever experiencing the joy that comes from personally discovering the truths in the Bible. Past efforts fail, so they give up. They're satisfied with getting all they need from someone else. On the other hand, once you get serious about studying the Word of God, you'll never again be satisfied with secondhand information. You know, it's, we encourage our people to go to Sunday school and come to church and to listen to the teaching and preaching the Word of God. And that's important for spiritual growth. But also important is 
to get in the Bible for yourself and to study it for yourself. And you'd be surprised how God could speak to your heart through the Word of God. Well, thirdly, it's because people are lazy. People are lazy and so they don't study. It's, it's hard work. It's hard work. It takes time. It takes effort. It takes concentration. It takes persistence. But most great truths do not lie on the surface. You have to dig for them. Just like a gold mine deep in, the, in a mountainside or pearls at the bottom of the sea. The pearls and nuggets are there, but you've got to look for them. You've got to dig for them. Now, there's three stages of attitudes toward Bible study. The first stage is what I call the apple cider vinegar stage. That's when you study the Bible because you know it's good for you, but it's not too enjoyable. My wife has me drinking this apple cider vinegar, and boy, I don't like the taste of it one bit, but I know it's good for me. Secondly, is the plain oatmeal stage. That's where it's not really interesting, but you know it's good for you, so you go ahead and do it. I don't know if you had just plain oatmeal with no syrup on it or no uh, flavoring, but it's kind of dry and boring. The third stage is the coconut cream pie stage. I love coconut cream pie. Now the coconut cream pie stage is when you are really feasting upon the Word of God and enjoying every minute of it. So next time we're going to talk about preparation for Bible study. So see you next time.